Alrighty. Yesterday was pretty fun. You guys have seen probably dozens of hours of campaign gameplay for Total War Three Kingdoms at this point, but it's time to put it all together. What you really want to know is, what did I actually think of my playtime with the game? Again, please bear in mind, what we played is a months old build, it's all subject to change, things like battle balancing and graphical fidelity will be tweaked or outright overhauled consistently all the way up until launch. So there are likely going to be some pretty massive changes between what we've seen so far and what the final product will actually be like. With that said, there are a lot of things that I think 3K is going to do really well, and there were some things from my play session that I think will need some fixing or changing without question. So, from a pure campaign perspective, I think Three Kingdoms is going to be pretty damn complex and have some depth to it, more akin to Total War Attila than something like Warhammer 2 in that regard, which a lot of historical and strategy game fans have been asking for, right? There is a lot to manage on the campaign map, from the loyalty of your generals, to the diplomats and spies you send out to other factions, to the population centers that number in the millions in some of the larger cities, and the food required to feed those people. Farms, for example, are going to be an incredibly important aspect of empire building. The entire country at this point is essentially in a period of civil war, disease, and widespread famine. So the highly fertile areas of the map are going to be a huge focus in the early game. Many factions won't even have access to them in the starting provinces, so immediately there are going to be border wars erupting all over China as the major players consolidate their holdings and latch onto whatever food they can grab, which means you're going to be seeing a lot of action really early on, and that the early game is going to be very fast-paced and fun, which is great. You've got a lot of things to worry about in the early game, which is what you'd like to see. You don't want to be starting out a campaign and be bored immediately right off the bat. And it kind of contributes to this Armageddon-like feel. But unlike Attila, which went for that very dull and very gritty atmosphere we all know, 3K is taking the Shogun 2 route in terms of vibrant colors and stunning visual flair. It has really strong art direction and foundations of design that make their way into pretty much every facet of the game, which is why the things that don't hit that high mark are so glaring and look so out of place, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. I think the learning curve on the campaign map is going to be higher here than it's been for a pretty long time. There is a lot to master, which is good for Total War veterans, but maybe less so for newer players. Everyone in the room with me in San Francisco was an experienced Total War vet. We all have hundreds, if not thousands of hours of playtime in campaign and multiplayer, and I think it took most of us a pretty substantial amount of time just to get our bearings and really get going on the Empire management side of things. But this is one of the things I made sure to stress to the developers, that they're going to have to come strong with their tutorial game, because frankly, I think even longtime vets will benefit tremendously from watching good tutorials in the run-up to release. There's just a lot of new features and mechanics to dissect and get good at, and it might be kind of overwhelming for new players. It might turn some of them completely away from the series if this is the first time they've ever jumped in, because there's so much to learn. So yeah, Total War Academy and the official channel will need to go ham, they're going to need to go hardcore on those tutorials, and CA's going to have to make some very nice ones in-game as well, in the UI itself, to get people on board. So I think that's a double-edged sword, but overall it's probably a good thing for the longevity of Total War Three Kingdoms. One thing I liked quite a bit about it was the building system itself, which seemed quite a bit more interesting than... I need money, let's build the money building, which was kind of a symptom of Warhammer 2's economy and infrastructure there. For example, if you want to build a conscription center, it will actually pull from the population of your cities, while establishing fortresses and police headquarters at the borders of your empire will improve your supply lines and let you range out further on your conquests. Some of the buildings even have malices and need to be balanced with what already exists in a given settlement, so strategically, it feels like there's more to think about. One of my criticisms with my time with the game, though, was that we weren't really put into a position to maximize our use of diplomacy, espionage, and a lot of the new campaign features. I think that starting our campaign on turn one didn't really give us the opportunity to really show those things off to their fullest potential. We've heard all this talk about spies and deep diplomacy, but we weren't really able to leverage these things at all because it was turn one. Our lords were low level, and none of the map was revealed, so we didn't have a lot of proximity to engage in diplomacy with the handful of factions we knew of at the start. That fog of war really blocked a lot of them out and meant that our options were very limited at the start. And because of the way trade slots work now, you couldn't even trade with factions until turn 5 because your first trade agreement only becomes available then after the first reform in spring. So it was kind of an issue because 
most of us only got, say, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten turns into the campaign, and we only had two hours to play, and much of that was obviously just getting adjusted to the game in the first place. I think it would have been better if we had been given a campaign save at like turn 45 through 60, maybe even turn 20, with a bit of a more established empire and the ability to use all the diplomacy and campaign mechanics that have been advertised. I had no real opportunity to use the interfaction politicking because you just don't have the money, the established relationships, the map knowledge, or the coalitions already established there to play the political game very much in the first handful of turns. Now, it is logical, of course, to start your campaign out at turn one at an event like this, so I get why they did it that way. They want people to see the very true early game, but I do think it's something they should maybe consider going forward for future events because starting at like turn 20 would have given players more time and more options to use all the things that's really gonna make 3K unique. Now in terms of the battles themselves, as I said in my last video, they were very easy in pretty much all of our playthroughs, not very tactical or interesting in my opinion, because in the build we had, things were super toned down, I imagine, so that games reviewers who don't have a background in Total War wouldn't just get completely rolled over. If you've never played a Total War game before, CA's probably not trying to rip your heart out and your soul out and just completely destroy you on the altar of Three Kingdoms just because you've never played it. You want to make sure that people have a good experience the first time they jump into the game, especially games reviewers who are going to be reviewing your product. So it wasn't great from our perspective because we have a lot of experience. It wasn't super satisfying, but from a regular games reviewer's perspective, it makes a lot more sense. So I get why they handled it that way, but it didn't make for the absolute top tier experience I would have loved to have had. Um, in terms of the battles themselves, Zhang Fei had a war cry ability that just plummeted enemy morale in an AoE, and you would basically just mass route armies the first minute or two you loaded into a battle. Again, I think that stuff is going to get balanced all the way up until launch. I wouldn't read too much into what you've seen in the gameplay so far. Um, they are going to be working on it quite a bit, and it's one of the last things that gets balanced, period. So CA were clear on it, they understood that it was an issue, they were aware that the battles were very fast paced and that the heroes were overpowered in their current form and that will change, but make it clear to CA in the comment section of their videos, on the forums, wherever you wanna do it. If you want battles to play a certain way, let them know. I don't mind fast paced battles, I loved Shogun 2 and now it's like the fastest game in the series, but these were definitely way too fast, heroes were definitely too strong and they're aware of those issues, so that's all we can ask for. Now the battle maps themselves were great, it's frankly really nice to see a return of four walls and large cities, truly large and epic layouts. Those are what I've been asking for for a very long time. You guys know what I think of vanilla Warhammer 2 sieges. They're just not quite where I want them to be, but these ones look like they're gonna be a blast to play. And the resource specific towns with mines and fisheries and ports were really awesome. There were some beautiful and really well-designed, really solid looking maps that I think are gonna be a lot of fun to play. Frankly, I'm not sure there's enough revolutionary stuff being put forth in terms of the battles themselves. For the first major historical release since Attila, I absolutely think more could have and should have been done in terms of the battles. If nothing else, making unit sizes substantially larger or making 40 unit cap the standard and optimizing for that would have really helped with a sense of scale and represented how gigantic these armies truly were in history. I mean, China had some pretty obscene amounts of manpower to draw from during the Romance of the Three Kingdoms period, so we're gonna be seeing the same armies we've been seeing since Rome 1, basically, which is fine in a game like Warhammer 2, where you've got these huge single entities and monsters that take up a unit slot, but it's less fine when you're focusing just on human-to-human -human combat, and I think the scale would have really benefited from being quite a bit bigger than it is right now. Not that these battles aren't epic. I mean, they're clearly way ahead of pretty much any other developer in regards to real-time battles on a large scale, but that's kind of the rub, right? They still need to improve from game to game and people are gonna notice when they don't. So where the campaign gameplay is really innovating, the battles themselves really aren't in any meaningful way from what I've seen so far, which is disappointing for such a major title. I think the battles are still gonna be fun and enjoyable and there will be some truly epic ones but I just haven't seen anything in regards to the combat itself that blows my mind. And of course, I would like to have that option. When I go to an event like this, I want to be blown away. That's one of the best feelings when you get your hands on a game for the first time and you are absolutely wowed. And I did actually have some noticeable FPS issues during my siege. I think you guys saw that in the recording, 
but watching other people's gameplay, it's possible it might just have been on my machine. I've watched maybe three or four other people's gameplay, I think Turns and Invictas, and a few others who played the exact same Siege Battle I did, and it didn't seem like they had any noticeable FPS drops. So regardless, I think that's something that's worth noting, but it's very possible that that was just my machine and it's something they'll definitely be working on in terms of optimization anyway, so I'm not particularly worried on that front. Now I do wanna shift gears a little bit and talk about the UI and principles of design. I really do think in a lot of ways, Total War Three Kingdoms is some of the best UI work we've ever had in this series. The tech tree and character portrait screen are truly, and I'm not exaggerating, I think they're amazing. They are truly incredible work. They are drop dead gorgeous. They have all the information you would need in a single location and they're easy to read and they're easy to understand. And that's true for so much of what we've seen in the campaign map itself. Again, campaign map, one of the best they've ever done, maybe the best. Obviously highly stylized, it's not gonna appeal to everyone, but I think it perfectly encapsulates and captures the romance period, and I'm very happy with it. But that makes the elements of the UI that aren't on that level stand out even more. There are a few things that don't seem to follow the same design philosophy or artistic nature, or the rest of the assets really, that the rest of the game does, and the two that I want to focus on here are the unit banner symbols in battle and the unit cards themselves. In my opinion, they do not fit the aesthetic this game is going for at all. They are very bland, very plain, do not convey much useful information at a glance, and in a setting that is this colorful, that is this vibrant and rich in history, kind of end up looking generic and vanilla and boring and completely out of place. I want to show you what I mean. So right here, you see the banners from three separate Total War games. Fall of the Samurai on the left, Rome 2 in the middle, and Three Kingdoms on the right. On the left, you can see the Jozai and the Sioux clans are fighting it out in Fall of the Samurai, and immediately, with a simple glance at their banners, you can see which faction they belong to, what unit type they are, how many chevrons they have, how tattered, how beat up the unit is from casualties, and the status of their morale. On top of all that information, it still looks aesthetically pleasing. You have the unique faction flavor, the heraldry, and the colors that are all represented on their banner. The banner is large, you can easily click on it, and it's scalable, meaning that from far away, it'll appear large, and then as you zoom in and get closer to it, the size and positioning of the banner will shift so as not to obscure your vision as you zoom in. Similar idea with Rome 2's unit banners. You immediately see the unit type, the status of their morale, whether they're friend or foe with the outline, and yet you still retain the flavor and the faction unique banner. You know immediately, I'm playing Rome, or I'm playing Parthia, or I'm playing as the Sam Knights. You know which factions are on the field. With Three Kingdoms, you see whether they're friend or foe, and the unit type, and that's it. You will see those same colors and those same symbols for every faction in the game, no matter what warlord you're playing. In Warhammer 2, you have the option to change it. You can either go for the full faction-specific banner or a smaller unit symbol, but even that smaller unit symbol option still retains that unique aesthetic that corresponds with the faction you're playing. Not here. Not with Three Kingdoms. And this was a fear that I had all the way back in Total War Attila and has come true and it makes me sad. No matter which faction or warlord you're playing, those colors and symbols will always be the same. They will always be green for you and red for enemies. And there's no option to change it. And this is a huge issue for me because these banners are literally what you look at like 80% of the time you play a battle. When you're zoomed out this far, when you're issuing orders, this is how people play Total War. About half of your hundreds to thousands of hours of Total War gameplay will be spent right here. And yep, you're gonna be looking at these lifeless, generic mobile icons that don't reflect the color, the heraldry, or the factions of the time period in any way, shape, or form. You literally see these banners more than the unit models themselves. So give them some life, CA, please. Give them some flavor, give them some variety, some uniqueness. Go the Medieval 2, the Rome 2, the Shogun 2, the Rome 1, all those routes and do what you've done in all those previous games because it works. There's a reason that system works. Make them reflect the faction you are playing. Make them give players some actual information on what faction they are and what their morale status is, whether they're tattered and beaten up, that kind of stuff. The fact that they don't is really a sore spot for me. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's a very bizarre design decision, honestly. It feels very out of place with the rest of the game and really won't help with the immersion 
in a game where immersion is very, very important. Like, you want to be immersed in a setting like this. That is one of the most core tenets of a strategy game, is that you want to be immersing your players in the setting. Total War banners should never look like that. The content creators in the room with me were all pretty much in unanimous agreement. I think at least three or four of the other YouTubers told the devs as much, and I definitely made sure I did. So, to a certain extent, I think the unit cards fall into the same category. Unit cards have always kind of been a divisive issue. It's literally impossible to please everyone with the visuals there. Like, I personally enjoyed the Rome 2 unit cards quite a bit, but I understand why some people hated them. And I didn't much like the ones from Attila, but I know some people who love them. I adore the styles that I used for Warhammer. I think that those and Shogun 2s were some of the best in the series. But I think these ones for 3k are honestly pretty bland. And like the unit banners, stick out as kind of generic and lifeless in an otherwise drop-dead gorgeous game. Now, I can get why some people like this more simplistic route, and unlike the unit banners where there's an avenue CA can take to give people options there to choose what they want, they can't and won't create a whole new set of unit cards just because people don't like them. So I don't expect a change here, and I won't request one, but while I think the point was to put the emphasis on the character portraits and make them stand out more, they were always gonna stand out anyway. That artwork is gorgeous and huge, so I don't think they had to make or sacrifice the unit cards to make the others look great, because they already do. So something more along the Shogun 2 style would have really benefited the unit cards dramatically in 3K, I think. So despite those issues, I think the core gameplay, especially on the campaign map, is pretty damn impressive and could very well end up being one of the most satisfyingly deep and complex Total Wars we've had in a very long time. It's kind of a blend of Shogun 2 and Attila in that regard, but unlike Attila, I expect that it will actually run smoothly and not be an optimization nightmare, which should obviously be a very good thing. And visually, it's gonna look much more impressive because there's actual color and stronger art direction and a more beautiful time period to explore here. So I think the game is headed in a great direction and has some very cool features being implemented, but I would have liked to have been able to use a bit more of those during the event itself. I think espionage, diplomacy, coalitions, and military alliances all have a ton of potential and could make for some of the best gameplay and most interesting late game experiences we've ever had access to in Total War before, which has me very excited. On the flip side, I feel like the battles aren't really innovating as much as they could have or should have, and that is kind of going to be a sore point, but it's going to be one of those things that I haven't still gotten a true look at how the battles will actually play because that balancing is going to happen much closer to release. So I, I wish they had had a better look at what battles will actually be like, but I can't say that those battles are going to be like what the final product will be like because it's not. They're going to be very different. So we'll see in a couple months, hopefully before that. Yeah, definitely hope, hope before release we'll get a good look at what battles will truly play like. But until then, it's kind of up in the air. I think the battle pacing will definitely improve, and I think heroes will be less overpowered than they were in this build. Overall, it was a positive experience, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was a lot of fun, and again, I want to thank Creative Assembly for flying me out and letting me be a part of it, and they have always been gracious and awesome hosts, so really want to thank them again for that, and appreciate all the work they've put into Total War 3 Kingdom so far, and very much looking forward to getting my hands on the final product. Let me know what you guys think about what we've seen so far in terms of gameplay, in terms of the campaign mechanics, and everything that we've gotten a chance to look at. And I'll see you all in the next video. Indie Pride, signing out for now. Have a good one, guys.